Stop my horse. Whoa, Nelly. What is this? This in 1995 was a bone stock 18 hole running golf cart. Now, here we are in 2023, it is not. As you can tell, through all the dirt, there's some differences. Just a few, okay? Some make it more efficient, some don't. Most do. I'll explain it to you. A little bit that's going on. These are lithium batteries out of a Chevrolet Volt car, okay? And they come to you, they look like that right there in the shape of a T. Okay, you can split those things out and get them in these separate modules. <clears throat> you can see I put strapping around them. I put some all thread through here, connect them together. That unit fully charged is good for 50.4 volts. Just that one. Now, that one by itself will power this vehicle. <laughs> but this is the cart that started started it all for me now my brother owns it we're fixing to upgrade it he wants to do a, do some changes on it we're going to add some batteries and get his runtime up so that's it stay tuned I got a limo build coming up shortly 72 volt lithium packs got the long travel over there in the box the Betus AC kit it's gonna be wild stay tuned see you next time sorry the air compressor cut on had to go turn it off a little video edit ah so this module what we call a module um, by itself is 50.4 volts. So that will actually power the cart. So I added two more, as you can see, um, and that was for endurance and power, um, get my runtime up. So that one module right there will power this whole cart. So what do you notice? You notice that there's six batteries missing, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six batteries missing. Six eight volt batteries. I don't know the weight on that. I'm not gonna quote it here, but it's a lot of weight. If you take one of those batteries out, one of those batteries weighs far more than this one module here. So when you're talking about output divided by input, the efficiency equation, you're getting rid of weight. We're talking weight to power, okay? So if I take a stock, stock form golf cart, took the lead acid batteries out and added those lithium batteries, my performance would go through the roof because I had lightened that cart up, I mean, we'll say three, 400 pounds. So that in itself is a great modification. Now, come in here, we'll start with the basics flight systems 700 amp controller this is your most basic controller because it's completely sealed has a few adjustments on it the adjustments are done with a screwdriver and you put a rubber plug back in almost waterproof it's not like a other manufacturers that have fans and you got to plug a laptop in them and tune them and you don't want that this is this is easy peasy you put that thing on here, an instant torque. Okay, it's 700 amps. So what that has the ability to do is take your power input through the controller and put it to the motor. When the stock controller, I think is 300 to 350 amps, sometimes 500 amps, depending on the, con 
on the cart that you get. Um, that's a 700 amp controller. So I take the power from the batteries through that controller and I put it to a modified engine. This is the Rattlesnake 2 motor. It's bigger and it's longer, okay? More torque, I think 40% more torque, like 60% more speed, or maybe it's vice versa, maybe 60% more torque, 40% speed. So we've got an enormous power output. We've got a controller that can take the amperage and the voltage, convert it to what the motor needs, and we've got a motor that can harness it. I've called Plum Quick on this cart and I let him know how quick I've had his Rattlesnake 2. And he said, well, you're at, you're at the max. You really, it really shouldn't be spinning that fast, but it's very efficient. And it's efficient, why? Because we've got the main solenoid is upgraded. There's no power loss there. I've upgraded all the wires. All these, well, <laughs> I've upgraded them, but some of them are, uh, are, are lacking. Some aren't as great as the others. Some are, you know, double lot welding lead. Some are probably standard two gauge wire, but the whole system has been upgraded. Um, the forward reverse switch used to be on a rocker right here, back and forth, forward reverse. Um, that wouldn't take it. We could, we could melt that in just one ride. So what we have now is a, what's called a contactor. Basically two solenoids, um, absolutely positive contact in reverse, positive contact in forward. Uh, and it's done through a rocker switch. So this is a 2000, nope, this is a 1995 Club Car DS and it has a rocker switch, something you would see in a, a 2000 and later DS. Um, so what we've done is we've lightened the cart up with the batteries, We've upgraded the whole running system. We take power, we harness it, we use it. Super efficient, right? I've upgraded all these cables. I can run this cart up a mountain and nothing even gets hot. I mean, it's, it, is, it is running as efficient as it can. Now, here's, here's, here's where we kind of go backwards. Yes, that's a subwoofer and a box and an amplifier stuffed in a little bitty hole but DC to DC converter that's for the pleasure I added a little bit of weight there I mean I'm we're you know we're gonna say that sub that amp in that box probably 40 50 pounds you know we're you know we lost probably three or four hundred with the battery pack we've added a little weight up here a little aluminum enclosure you've got a tray right here for your phone keys whatever you want place to put your speakers of course we added more rotational mass with a 14 inch wheel 23 inch tire but here's the thing with the electric basically you still get a hundred percent output no matter what Sometimes it takes a long time to get there. Sometimes it doesn't, depending on how efficient the vehicle is. Now, because I have the larger diameter, and what we're gonna what we're gonna talk about is the space from the axle to the outside of the tire. This is a 23-inch tire. Standard. Well, here's one out here. You see how small that tire is? We're gonna say seven to ten inches. Probably a ten-inch tire. Okay, that tire wheel combo will fit inside of this. So from the axle to the outside of that tire out there, it's probably only this big. Really super easy to spin, okay? When you go to a larger tire and a larger wheel, it's harder to get that rotational mass moving, moving efficiently. But this car is so super overpowered that it will pop wheelies and let me show you what I had to do because it would pop wheelies this is a limiting strap okay so when you when you 
if you're on asphalt and you floor this vehicle and the back tires don't totally spin, it will, I, I feel like it'll flip over backwards. I've never held it down, but I feel like it would flip right over backwards. And what I was doing is my A-arms, because they sit level, they would flex down so much that the spring would actually come loose here and it would pop when it came back down and I didn't like that pop. So now I put a limiting strap on it <laughs> made out of some something I found at a garage sale. These are actually seat belt buckles from a Jeep, top and bottom. This is strapping I found at a garage sale and I had a parachute company sew it all together. So it has some really cool stitching pattern, super strong, doesn't stretch, doesn't give. But I had to put those straps on it because those A-arms, because the front tires, would they, they were off the ground all the time. So you can see that um, that was that that was an issue because of the uh, <laughs> we'll call it the efficiency, but it may be the overpowered aspect of the car. Uh, the the front lift kit does add quite a bit of weight. Um, we've lost a lot of weight by changing the battery pack, but I've added weight with the lift kit. I've added weight with the tires and wheels. I've added weight with a stereo system. But this car, as it sits, will still run 33 miles an hour all the time, sometimes 36. I say sometimes 36. I've had it 35, 36 uh, probably once, twice. I've had it 35, one time 36 on good flat ground, good charged batteries. But <clears throat> um, the uh, it'll get there. You know, if you, you air the tires up, you've got that rotational mass going. Was alluding to earlier is your motor will go to 100% no matter what. Sometimes it takes a long time to get there. This car's super efficient, so it will it will get past any obstacles, and it doesn't matter what tires on it. It'll take it to maximum RPM. So if I if I wanted to if I wanted more speed, I could go to a larger diameter tire, and it would still it would pull it. It would do it. A um, couple other tricks in here we won't talk about in this video, but. This is the epitome of a lithium golf cart. DS series cart. Um, gonna, do, gonna do an AC kit on the limo out there at, I don't know if you can see, it's gonna be at 72 volt coming up. But this was the original. This is what, this is what got it started. homemade lithium kit that's it thanks for watching stay tuned 72 volt navitas kit but this is the cart that started started it all for me now my brother owns it we're fixing to upgrade it he wants to do a, do some changes on it we're going to add some batteries and get his run time up So that's it. Stay tuned. I got a limo build coming up shortly. 72 volt. Lithium packs. Got the long travel over there in the box. The Vitas AC kit. It's gonna be wild. Stay tuned. See you next time.